Good day and welcome to Handy Tutorials. In today's video, I'll be exposing to you one of the ways that people can literally get scammed. However, I'm going to do my possible best to bring this down to your level. But if for any reason I'm not able to fully expand on some of these methods, I will do a continuation in my other video. But one of the things you need to understand is very simple. It's quite painful if you get scammed. But your ability for you to know that someone is about to scam you requires a skill. And every skill that you see that someone has comes with knowledge. In the course of this video, I'll be making you understand and helping you gain a skill on how to easily identify scammers. Without much ado, I'm going to get straight down into business. And one of the easiest and simplest skills or, or methods of scamming that I've currently seen, especially if you're trading on Binance P2P, it's from Kenyans. And I'm going to give you good and clear examples. So one of the first things these guys do is they chat you up, they see your ad, and then they reach out to you. And after a while, especially if you dropped your ad, you merchants on Binance, you dropped your your phone number so that your people can reach out to you. Sometimes they create an ad and they never purchase from you. So they have a way of looking out for people, checking your number of three to see how long you've been a trader, things like that. So they check it out and then they contact you. And this is what they're going to tell you. They first tell you, especially if you find yourself in Nigeria, they tell you there's an arbitrage opportunity at a possible price of you buying dollars at or USDT at a very cheap rate probably at the official rate or something a little bit above the official rate. And the moment you fall for this, they are watching you to see, okay, let's see what you're going to say, what you're going to do. So the first thing they do, and you can see they haven't promised they are going to make use of Binance P2P as escrows. So how does this scam function? The first thing they are going to do is they are going to assure you that everything will be fine. You're going to make use of an Eversend app. And they sincerely have proof to tell you that Eversend is really going to work. Sometimes after they've contacted you on WhatsApp, the next place they go to is Telegram. And I'm going to give you the reason why they make use of Telegram. Now, when, when they get to Telegram, most of the times on Telegram, you do not get to see their phone number. And most of the time, these people are usually from Kenya. So you do not get to see their phone number once they bring you on Telegram. It's also easy for you to clear a chat without proof, unless you've been screenshotting the chat for you to show proof to Binance. However, they are way smarter than this. Assuming they are not the ones who control their Binance account, it means you will still lose your money. I will explain everything in details to you. So, the first thing they tell me is they are going to send me an ad and so that I can use the ad link or they will send me a QR code of an ad and then I will scan the QR code and I will have to make payments. So I had done my arrangement with this guy and I told him I was going to purchase some certain amount of USDT. And he said, not a problem. He sent me this link. As I time was sending me this link, I cannot guarantee if this link was actually his or if he got somebody's link and sent it to me. Perhaps in another video, I'm going to teach you about the triangular scam. So the triangular scam comes in a three-way thing. You who wants to buy or sell, the scammer, and then a third party who has no idea that he's being used. You could be the third party, you could be the person buying and selling. But the truth is that the scammer is going to receive the money while he's going to leave the other two persons to go about fighting for who paid and who did not pay. Eventually you end up in escrow and you guys will have to sort yourself but the scammer has taken your money. It's a deliberate thing. And for you to be able to avoid scams on Binance P2P, you also need to understand Binance laws. Because truth be told, Binance will tell you you're not allowed to chat with anybody on a third party platform, be it WhatsApp or Telegram. So whatever chat it is you're doing with anybody on WhatsApp or Telegram, ensure do ensure that you move that chat over to Binance. Whatever details it is somebody sends to you on WhatsApp or Telegram, ensure you tell the person to put the details on the Binance chat. If the person fails to do so, have it at the back of your mind that there is no agreement and whatever thing it is you do, you will lose your money. 
So he asked me and I asked how much USDT and then eventually finally agreed. So I will tell you what I think this guy did. So we finally agreed. He said he had 499 USDT. As at the time we first started chatting, it I think we, he told me he had about a thousand falls to deal. And then after a while, he began to drop down to this. So we finally agreed, okay, 499. So it's very much possible this was a triangular scam. So he goes over to, I cannot guarantee if it's a triangular scam, but I will give you two scenarios. I'll play this the goal of the triangular scam and the normal scamming technique that could have taken place. However, because I had knowledge and so I was able to avert this. So this is very simple. So in the case of the triangular scam, this is what the person does. We have OB, we also have um, John, and then we have Peter. So Peter is me. Let's assume that I am Peter. And then OB is a merchant. And why John is the scammer. So OB being a merchant, John goes to get OB ads. And then after getting OB ads, he copies it, the ad QR code, and he sends it to me. So he sends it to me and he tells me, please create an order on this ad. So I'm going to create an order on this ad. And when I create an order on this ad, probably I've put 499 USDT on this ad. Remember that I think that the merchant is actually John. Unknown to me, this merchant is not John. This merchant is somebody else. And so in my mind, I'm dealing with John. That is the person who I'm chatting with. We are going to assume that the scammer I'm chatting with is John, since I am Peter. And so, it so happens that, okay, so fine, what do we do? He sends me an ad, create or put in a year for 499 years, I put it. And then he sends me an account number on WhatsApp. And he tells me, please make payment to this account number. So imagine I pay for 500 USDT with this guy and I send the money to him and I come over to the chat now you also have to remember that Binance does not really have a place for ever send as a matter of fact they don't allow people to share links that's the first one now remember that this guy's name is Obi this link clicking on this link I'm going to realize that this link has nothing to do with Obi the name on the link does not even tally with the merchant ad. Because it is a triangular scan, the first thing you can see that the name of this person is what? Evans Corey. Good. The first issue I'm likely going to have on this account is the very fact that the account where I paid the money to and the ad which was placed, both of them are not the same. So because of this singular ad, I am definitely going to have an issue. So after I've made payment to this guy, who is John, who I'm calling my scammer to the scammer, this is the account number. After I've made payment to him, he receives the money and he vanishes into thin air. I go on the chat and I begin to chat Obi, which is also Crypto Den. That is his name. And I tell him, Mr. Crypto Den, please, I have made payment as me and you discussed on WhatsApp. And crypto then is like, are you okay? Which WhatsApp are you talking about? I might even send him a screenshot of our conversation and he'll tell you, please, I don't, I'm not the one who chatted you. I have no idea about what you're talking about. Remember, I've already paid somebody 500 USDT. And the reason why most likely I paid was because he told me I can pay him 830 Naira. As regards to what you a one year is currently selling at about 100 1160 naira there about currently in the market because i was trying to make maybe a profit of 500 naira on top in my mind I'd, i was about to make good money mr crypto then or obi has no idea about what has just happened and he's like we go over to binance i send screenshot to binance and remember the screenshot i'll be sending is ever sent Mr. Crypto then name is not Evans Corey, neither does he have Corey 
or anything on his name. Binance looks at the transaction receipt and tells me they have not made any form of payment to B or to crypto them. Therefore, because of that, I will lose the case. If I'm not careful, my Binance account will likely get blocked. One, I chatted with somebody on a third party platform. Probably I will suspend them for some days and I'll be accused of committing fraud for because for the period when this 500 USDT and we go to meet customer support, this money will be frozen. Mr. Crypto then will not have access to his money. I also would not have access to the money as this money is held in escrow. Most likely, he could say I'm holding his crypto and because of that, Binance could even block me. Maybe for 30 days, 60 days, even if I was the one who was scammed. Now, this is exactly how the concept of the triangular scam works. Take note that Mr. John has vanished with the money with no single trace because the ad does not belong to him. The second scenario, which I'm playing, going to play out for you here. In a scenario whereby crypto then is still the scammer's account. The scammer is not scared, neither is he bothered. The account in which this money was paid to is not his. The phone number here is not the phone number on his account. Therefore, he can simply deny it and claim or tell me he himself was not the one. Meanwhile, it could have been him. But it's possible the phone number he has on his Binance account is totally different. Therefore, I will still lose. Because he has a strong point and is going to make use of Binance rules against me. And his rules are very simple. He's going to say, this person paid money into a third party account and I have no idea. And according to Binance rule, everything you do must be done on Binance charts once you create an ad. So when this whole thing happened, I went on Binance chat and I told this crypto then, please, what is the rate me and you agreed on? And crypto then told me, he's not aware that, can't I say, am I not the one who placed an ad? Meaning I was supposed to place the ad based on the rates crypto then have put. If crypto then was working in line with John, I can't say. But the truth is, crypto then refused to confirm the rate on Binance charts. I asked crypto then to also send the link in which I was supposed to make payment, which is this one. Crypto then could not. And he asked, I asked him, please, what is the payment method? And he told me, pay with Impressor. Eventually, after a while, if you look here, so I told him, drop your contact on Binance, the one you're chatting with me with. So I wanted him to put this phone number on Binance. So if he fixes the phone number on Binance, I can easily do a screenshot in the event anything happens and send it to Binance and say, this is the phone number that I chatted with. Please, I need you to understand that I'm also teaching you techniques on how to avoid being scammed and how to present your evidence in the scenario that you get yourself involved in customer support or CS comes to appeal your case. For any reason you enter into appeal, this video is really going to be a lifesaver for you. So he refused and it, of course, the one you're chatting me with, that would have been the best proof. And this is what he's saying to me, please make payments. And I told him, do what I said and I'll make payment. Drop your contact on Binance chat. And this is what he's dropping for me. He's dropping a different number. Probably the phone number that he has dropped here is the phone number of this person. And most likely for this chat, he has already chatted this person up. He already knows the phone number this crypto den is using. And so he has dropped the phone number of crypto den. Take note that if for any reason I feel that because he dropped this phone number here that he knows it, then I've made a mistake. Remember I told you he might be working with crypto then or he might not be working with crypto then, but we'd never be able to know. And I told him this phone number is using to chat me. Put it on Binance chat. I will request that make payment ever sent. Remember that the payment method on the Binance ad was never ever sent. What was here was Impressor. And this is one of the payment methods that Kenyans actually use in making payments. So this is where it gets very dicey. I told him I have nothing more to say because 
this is not the first time I've seen Kenyans come to scan. And he asks me, why are you enjoying me? He knows that I've already caught him and I told him, perhaps try a new trick. Now he begins to beg me, please cancel the order. You are reducing my percentage on Binance. Now, do you even see that he's the same person? So apparently, Crypto Den and this guy are the same persons. But the truth is, he has every ability to deny me because the phone number here is not the same phone number that is on Binance. So he will deny me and there's nothing I'll be able to do about it. Whether they do a triangular scam or they're the ones running the account and pretending not to know. You have to be careful and to ensure you don't make a mistake. Remember, even the link on Eversend does not bear his name. This name is also different. If somebody is going to ask you to make payment to a different account, the person must put it on the Binance chart. If the person fails to put it on the Binance chart, for no reason should you transfer money into that account. Having seen this, this really saved me a great deal. Now, I also want you to understand that in the course of this video, I've taught you how Binance Appeal is going to work. So for any reason, any transaction you're doing, never do it on Telegram, always move to Binance Chat, ensure that the name's tally. If somebody's asking to print a different account, the person must type it down. However, that is still highly risky as Binance could likely still deny you. So if for instance, you're going to be paying into a third party, third party account, ensure you go and check the person's review to see what people are saying, because you could lose your Binance account even as a merchant. And so I hope this video has really helped you, but if it has, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel as I intend to bring more methods in which people are getting scammed. If you want to tell me about your own story or your own experience, I also leave a group, my WhatsApp group and Telegram group. Do well to join. Also remember that on my group that we have just one admin. If you've not yet gotten yourself a Pi account, do well to get registered on Pi. I will also be dropping the link so you can start mining and making money. Hopefully, I'm still going to do a video on Pi so you can see how to transfer your Pi and sell your Pi if you wish after mining. Thank you very much for watching and do have a great day.